resistance and uh, oscillators, and recently has been working on developing theory for memristive devices. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I want to thank first uh, the Dean and uh, uh, Avinoam Kolodny and uh, Shachar Kvatinsky for inviting me to this uh, workshop. Uh, I, only present, I only will have a short, uh, very short, uh, I was allocated 10 minutes, so I prepared a very short presentation just to give you a, a brief outline of what we are uh, doing at the moment. Um, my, wor uh, my work colleagues are Professor Corinne. Uh, doc, uh, Professor Gilli, which is the new Deputy Director of uh, Politecnico in Torino, and uh, Dr. Uh, Corinto. Uh, we are uh, working on the in uh, linear and nonlinear circuits and systems uh, research group in the Department of Electronics and Telecommunications. And uh, we are uh, mainly involved on uh, the understanding of the nonlinear dynamics and the mathematical modeling of uh, nonlinear uh, uh, electronic circuits. And, uh, my PhD was on log domain filters, for example, but uh, recently we moved uh, to understand the uh, memristors and uh, their dynamics, uh, the dynamics of circuits uh, that uh, use memristors, and uh, on their modeling. And uh, now we are trying to move to, towards some application, trying to understand what happens uh, uh, when you connect nonlinear isolators with the memristic synapses. And, uh, so I will uh, just briefly talk about the neuromorphic systems and uh, will uh, present uh, a model uh, for memristors that we developed at Politecnico and we validated it. And uh, then uh, I will show you the model of neurons that we will consider. We shall uh, then analyze a simple network and uh, try to see the role of memristor in the synchronization between the neurons. And what are the differences that uh, we, can, uh, we are looking at when we compare diffusive coupling to memristive coupling using our models. Uh, in particular, uh, these are the three effects that uh, are most uh, under focus at the moment. Uh, time to synchrony, effect of initial conditions, and uh, sensitivity to input mismatch. And uh, in part, uh, I am, um, my talk is linked to the previous talk. And uh, OK, neuromorphic systems. They may help us uh, to understand the origins of uh, adaptive behavior and primitive intelligence, as uh, the, this uh, paper from uh, Mario Di, uh, Di Ventra. Uh, it's very interesting uh, where he showed how uh, you can rep replicate the, the behavior of a unicellular organism by using a memristor based isolator. You can reproduce uh, all the adaptive uh, behavior of the amoeba that sometimes uh, is able to learn uh, from um, from changes in the environment and uh, to anticipate the, the previous uh, the next stimulus to come so he, and the, with a simple LC uh, simple oscillator with uh, an inductor a capacitor and a memristor uh, the ventra managed to replicate replicate the same behavior um, so a memristor can act as a synapse and uh, it can, uh, as we uh, listened from, from Professor Kang's uh, talk, uh, it can uh, uh, pave the way towards uh, really bio-inspired architectures in the near future. But uh, the most important things are to, to detect the inaccurate model of a memristor. And uh, in order to understand the dynamics of a, of a uh, neuromorphic network. So we, uh, I know that uh, also at Technion, the recently it was developed a new model uh, uh, from uh, Professor Konod Kolodny and uh, Shakar Kvatinsky, which is quite similar to the one that we proposed in this uh, paper that was just accepted on uh, TIGAS-1. And uh, our model is based on uh, the on boundary condition uh, tuning. So basically the Hewlett-Packard uh, memristor nanostructure is uh, shown in this picture. There are two different devices according to the polarity of the device. But basically, you can see it as uh, the series of two resistances, one on resistance, one off resistance. And of course, you can uh, modulate the resistance by changing the, uh, the history of the voltage across it, so the flux across it. And uh, we developed this model. Uh, these are the equations. Uh, basically, x tilde is the 
uh, is a normalized uh, length of the conductive layer. And uh, this is the, the way, it's, a, it's the state of the, of the device, and this is the way we modeled it. So the, the, the part that is inside the, the, the curly braces is the window function that uh, defines the boundary conditions. So basically, in the literature, uh, many authors uh, propose different uh, window functions to model the experimental uh, results. And uh, as you can see, the A window is uh, the famous Jokleker uh, window, one of the first ones. Then the B one is Biolek's window, and then uh, this is the C one is the one that we proposed. It's a very simple uh, model in which we basically assume uh, constant velocity uh, for the ionic uh, um, for the ions uh, along the the whole uh, length of the device. Ex uh, but then uh, the we account for the nonlinear behavior by tuning the boundary conditions and. Uh, we have developed a methodology that uh, on the basis of uh, experimental results from the literature um, optimizes uh, the, uh, the choice of the boundary conditions uh, on the basis of uh, minimization of, uh, uh, of the mean square error between uh, experimental data and model data. And so you can tweak the threshold voltages uh, so that uh, the because basically when the, when, when the uh, layer boundary between the conductive and the insulating uh, uh, la layers reaches one of the two ends, it gets stuck to it until uh, the, the input uh, sign is reversed. But you can choose the time, the c there might be a delay, because the delay creates the nonlinear effect. And uh, we developed a procedure by, by which uh, you can tune the, um, you can optimize the choice of the boundary condition so that you can replicate all the most of the behaviors that, uh, that are uh, shown in literature on the basis of the IB curves. Um, we showed, in fact, uh, <coughs> okay, this is the table where uh, we showed uh, the ability of the various models to predict uh, the behaviors of the famous Hewlett Packard uh, paper from uh, Strukov. And um, so basically, Jogliger and Biolek were failing to to capture some of the behaviors, and uh, these are instead um, our own uh, results from our own model. We are able to, uh, on, the, on the right uh, picture, you can see three different behaviors that were observed by Strukov uh, in the, um, at the HP. And we, mo we, okay, I don't present here the, all the analytical details that you can find on the, on the paper, because it's boring, just a lot of maths. But basically, the, idea, the whole idea, the reason why our model can detect the behaviors while uh, Biolek and Jogliger sometimes they fail is, uh, is explainable, in fact, uh, from the left picture, where you see the uh, dependence of the con uh, mem conductance with flux. And uh, basically, the mem resistor, uh, we engineers are used to work with the current and voltage, but actually, the in order to study the, prop the properties of a mem resistor and to uniquely define it, you should look at the charge flux uh, plane or on the mem ductance flux plane. And in fact, uh, we can actually, uh, we have, these are three different simulations, as I, so as I told you. Basically, by tuning the boundary conditions, we can have both single valuedness and multi valuedness in the mem ductance flux uh, characteristic for a sign varying input. Because remember, these pictures, this I, this, uh, pinched hysteresis loop uh, are uh, obtained for a uh, sign varying input, not for any input. So it's uh, actually, it's one of the, as we spoke with uh, Professor Kang a uh, few, few weeks ago in Turin, it's one of the controversial points about memory research because some, sometimes you can get, uh, for, for different devices, you can get the same IV characteristic. But actually, for example, in some cases, we have uh, seen this kind of characteristic for devices that are not mem resistors. And uh, um, so it, it's better to look at the, the, the charge flux plane. Uh, OK, we'll go a bit faster. This is, this is the model uh, that we developed. The, then we, the, we have the model of the neuron. We use the hinman rose model. As you, as you know, this is the model from uh, one of the most important uh, models that can uh, emulate the behavior of a neuron. 
for these parameter settings and these initial conditions, you can have uh, a range of uh, different behaviors uh, by just changing the input current. Of, of course, you can have spiking, bursting, you can have chaos, etc. And uh, some results are reported in this uh, work. Okay, so we consider basically a simple network where we have two in rows neurons and uh, we couple them with uh, a memory store device by using the our model. Okay, so basically you can have two, di two, di two different types of coupling. If you, if you use resistances to, to couple the two neurons, you will have diffusive coupling. So the coupling coefficient is a constant. If you use memoristic coupling, of course the coupling coefficient is uh, dependent on, on the state, on the state variable. Okay, so these are the uh, neuron settings uh, and the neuron initial conditions for diffusive coupling. And this is the table that shows uh, the values of the coupling coefficient for having synchronization. We are focusing in this uh, presentation only on the, these two uh, red rows. So we will consider uh, only period one bursting and period two bursting. What happens with memory stiff coupling? Okay, with memoristic coupling, we set the maximum value. Of course, the coupling can, can, can uh, range between uh, G off and G on. But we set the maximum uh, value of the coupling to C bar, where C bar was the critical value for the diffusive coupling, so that we are sure we are going to get coupling. We are going to get uh, into the same uh, scenario. And uh, these are the synaptic parameters, the synaptic initial condition and the boundary conditions. We set them to zero. And uh, we don't change the neuron uh, parameters and initial conditions. So basically what we found, three, three important results. Um, okay, on the top picture we have wh the what happens with diffusive coupling, and in the bottom picture what happens with memory stiff coupling. As you can see, the time to synchrony is faster for period one bursting using memory stiff coupling. The same happens uh, for all other uh, behaviors. This is, for example, for period two bursting. As you can see, there are three bursts for, m for uh, resistive coupling for, lo for long time while uh, memory stiff coupling gives uh, immediately the synchronization. What about the fact of initial conditions? I'm just uh, almost finished. The fact of initial conditions that uh, was uh, previously presented <coughs> by the previous talker. Um, as you can see, if you don't change anything else but the initial condition to the memory store, you lose synchronization. So effect of initial condition is very important and we have a paper about it. And also sensitivity to input mismatch. Again, you don't change anything else, just you uh, apply a small uh, delta to the, to, the to the input current to one of the two neurons. And uh, as you can see, the resistive coupling has no effect. Basically, synchronization, synchronization is still uh, there, but memoristive coupling is highly sensitive and you lose synchronization. So now at the moment we are uh, doing analytical uh, work trying uh, to, to, to explain this uh, with analytical techniques that we are, uh, we are familiar with, uh, with the nonlinear isolator. But uh, this is just a presentation that shows you what we, uh, we found uh, with simulations that with, model, with our model, if you use memoristic coupling instead of uh, diffusive coupling, this is intuitive. You have a faster synchronization. Uh, you have highly depend high dependence on uh, uh, syn initial synaptic state and you have a lot of sensitivity to input mismatch. Um, so basically, we are doing this analytical investigation at the moment. The only problem is that we don't have a biological uh, background, so we, we need a lot of uh, collaboration with the biologists if we want to progress this any further. And the last thing, uh, there will be a memory resource symposium organized by Professor Kang at, uh, at our department in Torino. It will be next August, um, so you're more than welcome to present papers there because it's a cellular nanoscale networks and applications work workshop, but there will be a, a, a seminarium uh, on uh, a symposium on memory stores. And we want to thank uh, Professor Kang for his support uh, in, orga in the organization of the symposium. Thank you very much.